Thank you again, Brother Salam. I'm on it, brother. Okay, I'm waiting for notification now. Perfect. Okay, boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have an incredible guest with us, one who we look forward to getting some information from, as well as some inspiration, and that is none other than Brother Abdul Salam Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Alaikum salam, my brother. It's like an echo. Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? I hear you good. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to uh, thank you on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast for taking time out of your busy schedule to come have a conversation with us this evening. Uh, the first thing that we want to know is, when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? First, allow me to say I give all praise to Allah who came in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad. I thank him for raising up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I thank the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for raising up the Honorable Minister of Farrakhan, who is a guide not only to the Black man and woman of America, but he's a guide to humanity. I am honored to be on your show. I want to thank our brother, Brother Love, for introducing me to you about a week and a half ago, about two weeks ago, and I'm honored to be on this show. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Uh, the I honor heard, is mine. Go yes. Ahead. I heard the teachings at a young age. I was 14 years old, and I heard the teachings through the five percenters who had sprung up in Harlem, New York City, in the early part of the 60s, around 64, 65. I heard the teachings in 1966. And in 1967, I was honored to be among a group of young brothers and sisters in a park that we have in Harlem called Mark Morris Park. Today, that park is called Marcus Garvey Park. Mm. We heard a man by the name of Clarence 13X. He was talking to about 200 of us. And I accepted the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I didn't know it was the teaching of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad at the time. And I accepted the teachings through the 5% nation, which is now known as the nation of gods and earth. But it was exactly at the age of 19, when I was serving time in a New York State prison, while in my cell, listening to the radio on some headphones, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad came on the radio. I don't know how that happened, because back then, Europeans was allowing no black voice to come over the radio to talk to us while we was in our cells. But I heard a tape by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and his tape was dealing with, we must educate and raise the consciousness of black women. We must teach and elevate the black woman. It was from that day I accepted the teachings on the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And that was in 1971. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. So 1971. Okay, great. My next question for you is I want to go back to Clarence 13X. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, our brother. Uh what what was it like being around him and what was his um personality like? Well, I was only around him one time. I only saw him one time. That was during the summer of 1967. Okay. He had just got out of Madawan Institution and he came and he spoke to about maybe about 200 of us. I really couldn't make out what he was saying because I was in the background, but was in my heart was this man is able to attract so many young brothers like myself between the age of 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 20, and some older than that. And that attracted me to the teachings of the 5% nation. And naturally, they gave us the student enrollment, they gave us the alphabets, supreme mathematics, and that's how it all started. He pricked my consciousness. So when I did hear the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and knew that his teaching was the foundation of the 5% that's the man I want to follow. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful, praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Okay, so you're in prison, you hear the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Uh, do you, what year do you get out of prison? I got out of prison 19, a year later. But when I got out of prison, the forces of evil was so strong on me and I have not mastered myself, I went back into the life of crime. And that led me to go back to prison. And that's, it's a term called 
jailhouse Muslim. See, right. a jailhouse Muslim, when he's incarcerated, he's 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 pushing the program. Mm -hmm. He's doing right this act. But upon his release, he become a nigga again. Mm. Well, I was one of those jailhouse Muslims. Every time I went to prison, I stood up for the teachings. But it wasn't until 1981, when I caught 20 years in prison, that I turned my life around fully. I said to Allah, if you bless me to get out of prison this time, I will no longer be a jailhouse Muslim, but I'll be a Muslim in society. I came home in 1991. And I came to Muhammad Mosque number seven. During that time, there was a young minister by the name of Minister Conrad Muhammad, who was the acting minister back then. He appointed me to be a study group coordinator. And I ran that for about two years. And then eight brothers in the New York State prison filed a federal lawsuit in the Eastern District of New York. And they called us to come to testify. And I was given the opportunity to go to the courts to give testimony of the teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And from that trial, law blessed us to win that trial to establish the nation of Islam behind the prison walls in the state of New York. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful. OK, so, yes, sir. Brother Islam, can I please stop you real quick? I don't want to interrupt. Good time, brother, because I'm full. I'm full. Yes, sir. Oh, that, and we want to get it all, but I just want to make sure that we get this in order. So what's going through your mind when you face in 20 years? Well, I knew this was unlike the other bids that I did. I did small bids. I did in one year. I did three years. I did 90 days. I did a lot of skid bids. But when I caught this bid, I knew that this was going to be a bid that either I changed my life or I come out and wind up getting killed or dying. So when I caught that 20 years, I said to myself, this is a time for change. And I took on the change in myself. I became sincere within myself that when I get out of prison this time, I wasn't going to be a jailhouse Muslim. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. OK, now, Brother Salam, what advice would you give to other, um, the, the next generation of people who think that maybe you have to go to prison to experience it, is there a story you can give to like a, like a like a scare straight type situation to to warn young brothers and sisters from going into prison? Oh, definitely. I would let them know going into prison, you can actually lose your life. Prison is an environment that where you can actually lose your life in prison, and I would advise any young brother who think prison is a is a thing that they should go to. That's crazy, because in prison, you have gang violence. In prison, you have people, man, that's, that's, it's just crazy. And if you don't know how to maneuver while you're in prison, you can lose your life in prison. So I would tell any young person, if you're out there doing wrong, think about, think about the, 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 the consequence of what may happen to you if you get locked up and go to prison. It's not guaranteed you'll come out of prison. You can lose your life in there. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Okay, my next question for you, uh, Brother Salam, is uh, you come out, Minister Rahman, I mean, Minister Conrad is the minister. What, what was it like being around him? What was it like being under him? Well, I admired him. He was a young brother who had a lot of inspiration, and he was bringing many brothers and sisters into the ranks, and um, he had a little name for himself in the nation. And I, I stood around him for a while, and then our beloved brother, brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, took on the reins. May Allah be pleased with our May brother. May Allah be pleased. And Abdul, and brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, I came up under him, and I've been up under him for 30 something years, about 30 mm. years. Mm. And um, I thank Allah so much for my brother because he's the one that also inspired me to continue doing what I was doing in the prison reform ministry. May Allah be pleased with our brother. May Allah be pleased. Yes, sir. Now, whenever we speak of uh, Minister Abdul Hafiz, uh, it seems like so many believers have come on a podcast from New York uh, who've shared such a uh, intimate stories with him that gives uh, the viewers a, a different view of him. 
You know what I'm saying? And can you can you share us share a personal story of your experience, what it was like to be around Minister Abdul Hafiz? Yes, I can share. But one, one story stands with me and him is that we used to do conduct Salat to Juma together. And I took a lot of advice from him in regards to establishing Salat to Juma at Muhammad Mosque number seven. And he gave me the roadmap and how to do that. And I thank him so much because he honored until this very day, I performed Salat to Juma at Muhammad Mosque number seven. So he was the one that inspired me to conduct Salat to Juma on Friday. And now that our brother, brother Arthur Muhammad, who have taken the reign, may God continue to guide him, he still afforded me to conduct Salat to Juma. But it was brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad that inspired me to do what I'm doing today in regards to the Salat to Juma and the prison ministry as well. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. And we're definitely going to get into the, the uh, prison ministry questions as well. I wanted to <laughs> ask you about uh, Salat to Juma and you um, conducting that. What um what what gives you inspiration to do a kupa? Um what what like what drives you every Friday to, to to do like to get where do you get your inspiration from every Friday? Well, brother, it all started in prison. When I was in prison, the nation of Islam was not established in the state prisons during the 80s. And we used to have to go to the Sunni Muslim mosque to to conduct to go to Juma. And I would go to Salat to Juma and I would learn how they conducted it. In 1987, I believe, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan instituted Salat to Juma in our nation. Around that time, he also instituted to make the, make the fast during the month of Ramadan with the Muslim world. So during, while, I, while I was in prison, I was fasting during the Muslim, you know, Ramadan with the Muslim world and performing Juma. So I learned how to read and write Arabic. I learned how to study the history of Islam through the prophets. And when I came out, I basically had a foundation of how to establish Salat to Juma. Mm, mm, mm. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, sir. I, 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 I like that. And do you have any um, videos or things on YouTube of you doing that so that uh, believers from around the country can uh, uh, see how you did it and, and you know, where you, you know, your coop buys? Many brothers and sisters have been informing me to do that. But I have no videos on 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 YouTube. But well, inshallah, we'll institute that one day. Inshallah. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. And uh, when you do, please let me know. Uh, do you uh, do you speak Arabic? I don't speak it. I don't speak it fluently, but I can read it, and I know what I'm reading. I just got to translate it, and with the Arabic English dictionary. But I taught myself how to how to read the Arabic when I was doing time in prison. Wonderful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent, excellent. Okay, now, what were you ever nervous about going back into prison when, as a free as a free man? What what inspired you to go back into prison? That didn't cause any trauma or make you nervous to go back and teach, brother? When we when we won the federal lawsuit and they called Muhammad Moss number seven and asked us that we need to send a, one of the ministers in there to be the first chaplain. Our beloved brother, brother Conrad Muhammad, brought my brought me up my attention to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gave him the clearance for me to go in to be a chaplain. But to be honest with you, when I became a chaplain, I wasn't nervous; I was enthused mm -hmm. due to the fact that I already just did ten years. I just got off parole, and now I'm going back. And as a chaplain, I I couldn't wait. They gave me the position at the state chaplain. I had to cover 60 prisons. And they gave me carte blanche to go to any prison I wanted in the state of New York. And I went from prison to prison during the course of my weekly you know, service, weekly tour. And many brothers from the 5% nation, the nation of gods and earth, accepted the teaching of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad upon me coming in and introducing the teaching of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the guidance of the Honorable Mr. Lord Farrakhan. Oh, wow. So within three years, I was able to get another brother hired, brother brother Haleem Muhammad from Muhammad Mars number 27, no, 23, up in Buffalo, New York. Mm. Then I got another brother hired, brother um, James Muhammad, who is the East Coast Regional Prison Minister, brother James Muhammad. 
I got other brothers hired, Brother Courtney Muhammad, Brother James Muhammad, Brother Henry Muhammad out of 7C. I got a sister hired, all praise due to law, Sister Linda Muhammad. She worked in the facility for the sisters. Yes, sir. So right now, all praise due to law. Allah blessed me to be the foundation of the prison reform ministry here in New York. And I want to thank our beloved brother, Abdullah Muhammad from Chicago, because I've been inspired through him as well when I became a chaplain. And me and brother Abdullah till this very day, we're still on our mission of being an example for those who did time in prison can come home and change their lives. All oh, praises due to Allah. Excellent. Yes, sir. Um, praise due to Allah. And I want to thank you on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast for your sacrifice, sir, and the sacrifice of your family. I'm on it, brother. I'm on it. Yes, sir. Now, could you let us know when you go back and what, like, you know, there's a different lecture that different ministers may give depending on the circumstance, right? Or uh, the um, mm -hmm. the arena. When you yes. go when you go into prison, what is like uh, one of your go to messages that you give to somebody who's locked in prison? Like, what do you say to them? Well, the basic teachings I give is self improvement, the basic for community development. I deal with if we don't change a man way of thinking, and that's what the most unrealized mommy teaches us. He said, "I cannot change a man way of living." until I change his way of thinking. Mm. So I come in with the self-improvement guides, the study course of self-improvement, how for them to relate with themselves. And that's where I start my lecture from. I started from that foundation, self-improvement. Then I branched it off into message to the black man, fall of America, you know, the teachings of the most unrealized mama under the guidance of Minister Farrakhan. But self-improvement is the foundation teaching in the prison system. Because we have to change a man way of thinking before we can change his way of living. You praise me too lot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And have you ever um, had an opportunity to um, let the most harmless little spark kind of know the work that you were doing? I never got a chance to speak with him directly. I spoke with him one time over the phone, but um, I'm quite sure he knows of our work because brother Abdullah, definitely informed them what we're doing here in New York City. Yeah. You know, we're the first ones in the whole country to be appointed chaplains in the state prisons of New York. Mm. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. And so many people showing you love, uh, Brother Salam in the comments. Thank you all for uh, continuing to show our brother love. I can't wait to put this on YouTube. Excuse me. Okay, beautiful. My next question is fear. In prison or out of prison? Has there ever been a time where you were faced with fear? If so, how have you overcome that fear? Well, in 1986, when I was doing time in Greenhaven Correction Facility, during that time, there were starch enemies against the nation of Islam. You know, they have a problem. Some brothers from a different community had a problem with us saying the law came in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, the great mm -hmm. man. Yes, sir. And during that time, my life was being threatened when I was doing this time in Green Haven. I never forget an incident where a young brother who was locked next to me came to me and said, brother, my name during that time was brother Robert. They used to call me Mel Son under the five percent nation name. He said, brother, man, be careful, man. There's a hit put out on you. So I had to stay closely near myself. But they had a problem with us with that statement. We bear witness that Allah came to us in the person of Master Far Muhammad. But as time went by, when Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan spoke at Madison Square Garden, and a lot of, lot, lot of brothers from different schools of thought was able to observe that lecture given to, given to us by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan at Madison Square Garden, it gave clarity to a lot of them in realizing that we're saying that a law came in the person right now. We're not saying that he's the one who created the sun, moon, and stars. We're saying that the spirit, his will, and his power was made manifest in this man, Master Fahd Muhammad, the great Mahdi. So my relationship with other communities began to gradually grow closer and closer and closer. And all praise due to Allah, my life was not touched. Praise due to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. And uh, speaking of uh, point number 12, what, what? Uh, because I'm sure if you were speaking in prison and 
New York with the five percent community that comes up a lot. What what is your usual like? How do you respond to someone from a ministerial standpoint? Like, what do you say to people when they ask you about point number twelve? Well, the first thing I say, I teach from Prophet Muhammad because Prophet Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with him, spoke of one coming in the last days. He made a statement in the Hadith. He said, "This world will not pass away until a man from my house come." and rule over the Arabs, his name, as well as his father's name, will be Muhammad. Mm, mm. That, that, that stuck out when he, you know, he, he's talking about the great Mahdi coming in the last days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so when I speak on the great Mahdi, I speak on the mathematics, as well as the historical facts and the prophecy that Prophet Muhammad gave of him coming in the last days. As you know, in Surah 16, it talks about the rolling up of the heavens. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan during the Madison Square lecture talked into that of the thousand year setback in Islam. Mm. That Islam will fall for a thousand years, but after the fall, great Magdi will make himself present. So we say the thousand year began in 1932. Yes, sir. The Hadith, the hadith say, Prophet Muhammad said, three generations after me will no longer be of me. That's right. The Hadith explained a generation is equal to 100 years. Prophet Muhammad returned back to Allah in the year 632. Is that right? That's right. So from 632, 300 years brings us to 932. Well, 932 begins the thousand year setback in Islam. So when you add a thousand years to 932, it brings us to 1932. Praise be to Allah. So according to Prophet Muhammad of Arabia, may Allah be pleased with him, he gave us a prophecies of the coming of the great Magdi. And he said that when he comes, you know, he will be seen with the Messiah. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. We bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is that Messiah due to the fact he fulfilled what the prophecies in the Holy Quran talks about in Surah 3, where it talks about when the Messiah comes, he gives sight to those who are blind. Black That's folks right. are blind. That's right. The deaf here. Black folks are deaf. And he raised the dead to life. Now, you know we are dead people. No one did that kind of work, and we give honor to all our Black leaders that came before the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and prepared the way but none of them did a magnificent and glorious work like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and raising our people to life. Praise be to Allah. So when I talk about Master Far Muhammad, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister of Farrakhan, I speak from Quran, the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament. And if we didn't have none of those books, just look at what was done inside of America. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If we don't have, if we have no Quran, no Bible, no nothing, look what the most honorable large mommy did in America, only going up to the fourth grade. That's a miracle. No one have ever done it since. Well, I walk by. Stuart Farrakhan is rebuilding his works and he's doing the same works of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we know Master Far Muhammad is the great Mac D. That's right. We know that be based on the works. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Okay, great. And thank you for uh, giving us some uh, great teaching points. And I hope that everyone on YouTube, make sure we can continue to chop this up. We have a quick 60 second commercial break um, from our student minister, Brother Robert. Uh, I mean, excuse me, Brother Salam, Abdul Salam. Um, hold on one second. Uh, we have a quick 60 second commercial break for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast, sir. Thank you very much. One second. Okay, here we go, here we go. Sorry for sorry. And thank you for and thank you for teaching us, uh, man. We need this on this. Uh, on it, brother. If you would like to be a sponsor or donor of the People's Podcast, please cash app the People's Podcast on Cash App. Thank you very much. My brother Rashad, Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out to him if you need any of those. 
my sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me's children's book and coloring book. Please go get both of those books. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country. And right here in the studio in Atlanta, Georgia, we love our tiny dancers. Student Minister Robert L. Muhammad of Austin, Texas, Conflict Mediation, Squashing the Beef Throughout the Southwest Region. He does an amazing job. Thank you very much, sir. Um, his wife, Sister Fudia Muhammad, Children of the Most High, giving birth to uh, a God in the Science of Child Rearing. Please go get that book. Sister Sherry Muhammad, AsiaticMinds.com, a virtual school that teaches young kings and queens a, uh, an amazing curriculum dealing with STEM. If you want your child, children to learn virtually, please send them to AsiaticMinds.com. Sister Sherry Muhammad, Fashion Gods, Urban Streetwear Clothing for Men and Boys, 314-325-6009. He'll keep you fresh and dripping uh, in the best of fashion. Brother Kenneth, Bowtie Maker Extraordinaire, uh, he'll ship both ties to you anywhere in the country. Thank you very much, Brother Kenneth. Please get both ties from him. We're coming right back to our brother, um, Dr. Henry M. Carter, King Henry Turkey Legs, Atlanta, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services of Chicago. Please reach out to them. My father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ and Down is Not Out, both available on abdusharif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse. Thank you all very much for your support. Right back to our, our brother, student minister, um, Abdul Salam Muhammad. Yes, sir. My next question for you, sir, is the Million Man March. How did that um, personally uh, impact you? Well, brother, it impacted me because I seen a miracle take place in the midst of America that never done, never took place before. During this time, I had just got the job as a chaplain for the New York State Department of Correction. I had to go to Albany, which is the central office, to get them to allow the brothers in the prison to be able to watch the Million Man March. And they afforded the brothers, all the brothers in the New York State prison to be able to watch the Million Man March in the yard or in the housing unit. And Allah blessed the brothers in the prison to be able to observe that day. But to me, brother, it was magnificent because when I came down to Washington, I was driving down, me and four other brothers. One of the brothers by the name of Brother um, Hakeem, he just recently passed away, also known as, I mean, Brother Nelson Muhammad, also known as Hakeem. He lived in Atlanta, Georgia. He just passed away maybe like a month and a half ago. And another brother by the name of Brother Barry out of Muhammad Mosque number seven. And another brother by the name of Elijah Shabazz. We was driving from New York City to Washington, D.C. When we got into D.C., it was about maybe 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning. What I noticed that was unique, uniquely strange, was that on the left side of the traffic going north, I noticed a lot of Caucasian people was leaving out of Washington. Unbeknownst to me at that time, I didn't know that they closed down the Senate, the Congress. They closed everything down. And when we came into Washington DC, it was an awesome event. And as I was able to look at into the awesomeness of the brothers that was in that was present, I felt like we was in paradise, like we was in heaven. It was such a peaceful, it was just a peaceful event that I, I can never forget that. I will never forget that. We had over 1,800,000 black men. And when I saw that, I knew. There was other black men that didn't make it. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, even though we had 1,800,000 black men in truth, the minister could have tripled that like nothing because I'm quite sure each brother that was there no more than two or three brothers that didn't make it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was an awesome event. And I'll never forget it. Beautiful. Oh, I'll walk by. Yes, sir. What has been the greatest trial in your life and how have you overcome that trial? One of the greatest trials in my life was when I was in prison, the passing of my mother. You know, death, when you experience death in prison, it can, it can hit you in such a way that it can actually cause you to really blow your mind. I became extremely depressed because I was blaming my incarceration on my mother's death. Another thing that affected me, my sister during the early 90s died from crack cocaine. 
and the facility didn't allow me to go to the funeral. But Allah blessed me to overcome those deaf experiences. And that's why I urge brothers that's out there doing wrong, brother, when you go to prison, it's not guaranteed you come up out of there because sometimes you will experience in your life people passing away on you while you're incarcerated. Mm. It can be your wife, it can be your husband, it can be your child. And that's a, that's a dreadful experience for one to experience, the loss of a loved one while incarcerated. So that was an experience that Allah blessed me to overcome, but it was an experience that made me the man that I am and the greater man that Allah will guide me to if I do continue to stay on this path. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. What has been the greatest joy in your life, sir? The greatest joy in my life was my wife and I having our first grandson in 1993. Mm. Until this day, my wife and I, we raised him. My daughter had a baby at a young age, was unable to really take care of the child. So my wife and I, we took that child and we raised the child until this day. The child, he's not a child no more. He's 28 years old. But that was the greatest joy, seeing our first grandchild come into the world. And the second greatest joy was seeing our great grand, first great granddaughter come into the world, Sister Princess. She's six years, she's five years old now. So those was joy, seeing new life come into the world. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, you, you told me before we went live that you've been married for 42 years. And I just think that's such a, a, an amazing um, accomplishment. What has been the key to your marriage lasting 42 years? Well, brother, you know, when you are doing time in prison, I met my wife in 1979. In 1981, I got 10 to 20 years. When you leave a wife and children on the outside, that's a heavy burden on a man incarcerated. But Allah blessed me to have a Muslim wife, an MGT, a woman that bear witness, man, that there's no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Father Muhammad. And on that strength alone, she stayed with me for 10 years in prison. Mm. Praise is due to Allah. During the time in prison, they would allow us every 90 days to have conjugal, vis conjugal visits. You know, they call it trailer visits, family visits. And every 90 days, every four months, they allowed your wife to come in and stay with you for two and a half days. So mm. that was a great help for me to be able to bring my children and my wife to see me every, every four months and stay with them for two days. But I thank a lot for my wife because she stayed with a brother. And when I got out, I, know, I made a commitment. I would never leave a good woman. And I thank Allah so much that me and my wife, till this very day, have a happy marriage. And we've been together for 42 years. And it, it wasn't always easy. But you know, when you go through marriage, you must endure the trials and tribulations of life so that you can overcome it and continue in the course of your marriage. That's beautiful, brother. That's real beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you do for fun, uh, Brother Minister? Well, brother, I do a few things. You know, I, 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 I'm an inventor. Okay. I'm also a co-inventor. While I was doing time in prison in 1985, I met a brother who was doing 25 to life. He was much older than me, but he came to me one day and said, brother, you know, I'm an inventor. I invented uh, a, a, a machine, not a machine, what he said, uh, an engine for a boat and it's powered by water. I thought he was crazy when he told me that. He said, I, I designed an engine for a boat that it don't need no gasoline and don't need no oil. It's powered by the water. He inspired me to become an inventor. And while I was in prison, I came up with an idea of a portable light fixture that clamps on to powder your umbrellas. I had that idea. And when I got out of prison, I pursued it. It didn't get off the ground because the company that I was dealing with in Taiwan reneged on the contract. So I put it down and I pursued a second invention with another brother who did time in prison. And that invention is about to come on the market in another three more months. It's called autorain.us. Mm. It's a car alarm that will enable you if anybody break into your car in real time, it comes to your cell phone. You can cut the engine off. You can lock the door. 
and mm. you can connect with the person and see them visually in real time. That device is coming on the market March 22, inshallah. It's called Auto Ring. I also have another invention with another That's brother. Amazing. We have another invention called the VA Monitor Wristwatch. It's a monitor device that is an upgrade of the ankle monitor bracelet that worn by parolees and people on probation. But now they can wear a watch. It comes with a tamper-proof, waterproof, lock wristband. But our watch now got video capability where the people at the parole center can also see them, communicate with them. Our watch come in another part without the lock wristband, but for senior citizens. You know, you ever heard of the medical alert companies? When you yes, see sir. the person, you say, I'm falling and I'm hurt. Yes, sir. You can monitor your grandparents or senior citizens with a watch that we have called a VA monitor watch, which watch. And we have that right now on our website. We're looking to upgrade it to 5G. Mm. And that's you by the summer. Go to my website, www or ohana enterprises.com ohana o h a n n a enterprises.com and that's the second pattern the brother that's the inventor of that his name is robert fennel and he's the one that with that monitor base of bracelet i'm just helping him to bring it to market that's beautiful I, brother. man man well, i bless you go ahead yes sir <laughs> Yes, sir. The other invention is called autoring.us. You can go to www.autoring, like a ring, .us, and you'll see it there. It's coming out in March, inshallah. That's phenomenal. Yes, sir. Well, um, what type of music do you like to listen to, uh, Reverend Minister? Well, brother, you know, I'm, I'm from the old school. You know, I'm a, I'm a whisper man, you know? Okay, okay. Dale Phonics and, you know, all that old stuff, you know, Maze. And Earth, Wind, and Fire. But I also okay. like date music. You know, I like Kim. Okay. You know? Okay. I love R and B. You know, so I'm I'm up to date now. I'm not old. I'm not too old fashioned. I'm up to date too. <laughs> I like rap. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Okay, great. Um, my next question for you, sir, is, what do you want your legacy to be? To be an example that a man or a woman can change their life if they unfortunately went over to the other side of doing wrong. Mm. I want to thank the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaching because he have a teaching that is so tailor made for all of us. I don't care if you went to college, went to university, or you did time in prison or whatever. His teaching is so tailor made for us that regardless where you at, it can bring you out and evolve you to greater heights. So I want my legacy to be that you can overcome life adversities if only you just have patience and bear with what you got to bear with until the law bring you out of it with, your, with, your, with his permission. Yes, sir. Praise, Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. And thank everybody who continues to uh, like, share, and subscribe to people's podcast. I can't wait to put this on YouTube this evening. Where can we, um, are you on social media, sir? Not really. I'm, you know, I haven't got there yet. But I will. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the People's Podcast. It, and whenever you, um, the auto ring, when you when you release it and, and, and you're ready to go, please let me know so that we can bring you back so that we can help promote that. I, I mean, a black man, in, I mean, that's God level stuff, brother. Yes, sir. We got to we gotta talk about that. That's yeah, that's Thank you to Allah. Thank you for allowing me to come on your show and may Allah continue to bless you and guide you and your family and bless all of us during this hard time that we as a people are under. But all praise due to Allah. If we just take heed to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan word, he will get us to the other side of the river. And he won't say what Allah, what I have done. He will say, look what Allah has done because I'm glad your mom said he is a good brother. Yes, praise sir. Him. Yes, sir. But keep teaching. Yes, sir, brother minister. Well, I want to thank you. Thank everybody who's watching tonight. Um, once again, I can't wait to put this on YouTube. Uh, thank you. Thank you again and your family. This is Joshua Little Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Alaikum salam, my brother. The honor's been mine, sir. Yes.